What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Restoration Rundown podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to you, the restoration business owner. My name is Ben, the host of the Restoration Rundown podcast and the CEO of Ironclad Restoration Marketing, where we help restoration business owners get more sales by getting their internet marketing right. Today, this episode is all about your domain for your restoration business. So if you're watching this and you already have a website, you got somebody else managing it, this is gonna be really important. Um, if you've ever been in a situation in the past, like a lot of guys out there where you've had uh, somebody else build you a website, buy you a domain, buy you hosting, and you got screwed uh, by somebody holding you hostage, this episode is for you. If you're thinking about starting a restoration business or you're in the process of buying a restoration business or starting a new one and you're ready to get a domain, you've got a business name picked out, then you really need to pay attention to this episode because today we're going to go over choosing your domain and hosting basics for your company and it's going to be threefold. So part of it is going to be a little bit about your branding for your company, which is important when you're choosing a domain. Uh, the other part about this is going to be security. So making sure you're protecting your assets. And the third part is going to be about ranking your website on Google because that's how uh, your service-based industries like water damage, property damage, restoration contractors are getting leads these days. Now, I know a lot of you guys buy leads from Home Advisors and, and, and Angie's List and 33 Mile, but if you're doing your digital marketing correctly, you can omit all of those services and start getting your own leads coming in on a consistent basis. All right. So when we're talking about your website, your domain, you got to remember for the purposes of digital marketing and what we preach here at Ironclad with our digital dominance or digital omnipresence method is your website is the hub of everything. Okay. Websites nowadays are a window into your business. It is your virtual storefront. Um, the majority of people who have property damage or need some sort of home service um, are going to be finding these companies from the internet. The statistics are there if you ever care to look at it, but it's over 90%. Right? People aren't driving around um, you know, up and down a street and then they look and they see your, your signage in front of your business. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And you know what? I do need some water damage restoration today. No, they're going on a search engine when they have a problem and they're going to find a company like that if they already don't know somebody and they're getting it referred to. So um, your website is the hub. That's where all of the links, all your social media profiles, everything drives eyeballs to your website, including your blog, your LinkedIn, and all your other branding that you do. All right. So it's important. It's a fundamental aspect of a service base. It's a fundamental act, uh, aspect of restoration businesses, marketing Whatever the case may be, branding, it's something that you need to make sure that you're setting up from the get-go. And just a side note, the reason that I decided to make this today, outside of it being really good information and, and uh, everything like that, is it happens more times than I can even count that um, companies aren't doing this this way and either have poured endless amounts of resources, whether it's monetary or their own time, into building a brand um, and getting that taken out from them because they don't, aren't following these principles that we're going to talk about today. So we're going to start off with your domain, right? The most, if you're not going to take anything away from this, uh, podcast, uh, whether you're watching on you or you're watching to me on YouTube, if you don't take anything away from this, but this point, buy your own domain on your own domain registrar account. When I'm talking about a domain registrar account, um, I'm talking about companies like GoDaddy or Bluehost or any of the other hundreds of companies that you can go on and register and buy a domain. Um, as far as a registrar that I recommend, GoDaddy is the best one to go buy a domain on um, for a couple of reasons. One, they make it really easy. Um, honestly, you need to set up your own GoDaddy account. So you go in there, you put your email in, you put your contact information in. You go search your domains, you buy the domain, the domain's tied to you. And you got to look at your domain like you would your business license, right? You wouldn't hire somebody, you wouldn't have like some guy that like one of your techs go out, hey, go ahead and register my business in your name. That, and that's the same way domains are, but guys do it all the time. So whether it's you have somebody you know that's coming into the company, going to build you a website, a family member, or somebody you know that knows how to do that stuff, or you're hiring an agency and you don't have a website yet, Make sure before you do anything that you are the one that goes in, sets up your own GoDaddy account and buys the domain with your information and your payment information. Um, 
This happens a lot. I mean, we recently had a client come in that didn't own their domain and they're ready to move marketing agencies. And guess what? Their marketing agency they were using before is pissed. And they're like, nah, no, we own this domain. Because if I went in on your behalf and I bought your domain and I was um, not, you know, didn't have good ethics and we weren't like a great company, I could technically sell your domain to somebody else. Especially if I built authority to that domain with SEO for a long time and I knew that thing was getting traffic like crazy, they're worth their weight in gold. So to avoid any future headaches for yourself, buy your own domain. I can't state that enough. All right. Now, when you're picking your domain name, a couple things to keep in mind. You want to start with your business name. So GoDaddy has a search bar and you can type in, if your company's Joe's Restoration, type in joesrestoration.com, see if it's available. If it is, awesome. Um, but in the restoration industry, since there's so much competition, there's a good chance, depending on your business name, that somebody already owns that domain. And that's okay. Um, start with your business name and you can add things in like a city indicator. So if you're Joe's Restoration and somebody owns a Joe's Restoration, but they're in like California or something like that, just, and you're in South Carolina, type in Joe's Restoration, South Carolina, Joe's Restoration SC. Um, you know, anything like that is fine. Um, one note about domains is back in the day, people used to be able to buy a, what's called a direct match domain name. So, and guys are still doing it to, the, to this day and it's, you got to stop. What that means is people were going out and buying water damage restoration, Dallas.com. And they were building a little landing page and they were basically getting a free ride on Google because Google used to not filter those out. Well, when Google realized that people were doing that, it is totally against their guidelines. It's totally against everything Google stands for as far as their, um, you know, what they're looking for when it comes to pertinence and relevance for search. And they released a core algorithm update that got rid of that. So your domain name, don't worry about what it is. I mean, you could literally have anything make up gibberish as a domain name, because when it comes to your ranking factor, uh, one of the big ones is the type of content that you put on your site. And at the end of the day, everything that you do as far as ranking has to do with building authority to your domain. So whether it's creating backlinks, internal, external links on your site, the right kind of content with the right kind of keywords, the on-page optimization, what you're doing is you're building authority to the domain, whatever the domain may be. So you know, whatever domain you decide to pick, make sure it's something you're going to be living with forever. All right. Because if you build authority to a certain domain for a certain amount of time, and let's say you want to switch domains, you know, you're going to have some sort of drops. Like you're going to get some sort of, um, some, some, not a penalty. I don't want to say, but you're starting from scratch. Now there's ways to forward the old domain to the new one. And it's a lot of work from an SEO standpoint. So if you're with the right agency, it's not that big of a deal, but ideally you want to pick a domain that you're going to be comfortable using for the, the whole time you run that business. Okay. Unless you completely change your business name. Um, and then there's ways around that too, but we're not going to get too technical. So for your domain name, pick something easy to type and spell. Um, so if you have a business name, that's the best place to start. Put that on there. Um, you know, one of the things with, with your domain name. So if you have a really long business name, try to shorten it up with your domain name. Um, because a couple things can happen. You don't want people to misspell your domain. And from a branding perspective, you have to put that domain name on your vehicle wraps, on your equipment. You have to put it on your business card. So if your domain names like takes up the entire span of your business card, you're just creating more instances for somebody to misspell it or not understand it. And, you know, you're going to have people out there that aren't, you know, very tech savvy. You know, we don't want to have any instances where they're misspelling it. So try to keep it simple, keep it super simple, keep your business name. Um, you know, again, if your business name is taken, try to stay away from hyphens. I'd rather see why it's not that big of a deal. It does kind of look a little wonky and that's more of a personal preference for me. Hyphenations is kind of like a no, no, but it, it's not going to kill you because again, remember, um, from a lead generation standpoint, you know, all the, all the authority goes into your domain name, whatever the domain is that you're using. Um, but I like to stay away from hyphenations, keep it short and sweet. Um, again, hyphens can just make somebody, uh, misspell your stuff a little bit more. Now this, again, it doesn't have anything to do with leads, but it does have something to do from a branding play. Now, a lot of guys out there will get disgruntled because the .com is not there. And, and again, there's a lot of companies that go out there and just buy up all kinds of .com. So if you have a, like a generic restoration business name, there's a good chance the .com is not going to be available. But it's okay because you can use .net, .biz, .us. They're all fine. It's not going to make any difference at all because if you do this right and you're running your digital marketing campaign properly, you're building authority to whatever the domain may be. Okay. So don't worry about your .net, .com, .biz. Just get whatever you can that makes sense for your business. 
We have clients that have .coms. We have clients that have .nets, .biz, .us. They're all totally fine. What I normally do when I'm buying a new domain or setting up a new business for myself, I buy all of those. I buy the .com, .net, .biz, .org, .whatever I can get because if it is going to be a viable business and I'm going to be dedicating resources into uh, building the authority of that domain, I don't want the chance of somebody trying to I don't even want to use the word steal, but setting up, if I own a .com and then they go and buy the .net, .biz, .org with the same business name, that could get a little muddy, all right? Especially when it comes to ranking. So own them, you can forward them all to one spot. Um, that's just a personal preference. Uh, and with your domain, I don't have it on here, but it's very important to purchase the privacy option. So um, again, can't overstate this enough. Spend five minutes, set up your own GoDaddy, um, I like using GoDaddy as a domain registrar just because um, they just make it easy, but also they always there's coupons every every week. So you come up to your yearly renewal um, and you can Google search GoDaddy coupons. You can save like 30 or 40% on your domain name. So that's one of the only reasons I use GoDaddy. That is the only thing that we use GoDaddy here at Ironclad for any of our clients for. Outside of that, however you may feel about it, I can't stand them. I don't like most of these big companies when it's domain registrars or hosting related. Um, but uh, side note, when you're buying your domain and, and you're renewing it, buy the privacy. All right. They'll give you an option. It's just basic privacy. Don't, they always have upsells, just the basic privacy. It's either $7.99 or $9.99 a year. Totally worth it. Because when you set up your own GoDaddy or domain registrar, wherever you decide to go to, you're going to have to put in your name, your email address, your website URL, your home address or your business address, whatever the case may be, all of your contact information. If you don't select privacy, somebody can do a reverse search on your domain name and they'll get all of that information very easily. So spammers can literally go through and just get all your contact information and clog your inbox. They'll be calling you on a damn phone. I know you want to avoid that. You guys get enough calls as it is already. So to avoid any of that stuff, purchase the privacy, make sure it's just tied into the renewal of your domain every year. It's worth its weight in gold. What that does is it hides all your contact information. Perfect to do. you got to do it. It's very important. Unless you like, you're very bored and you want to talk to spammers every day because they will be calling you the second you register that domain, you will be getting phone calls if you're not on privacy. I promise. So you've chose your domain. You've bought your domain. You own your own um, domain registrar account. Um, now you have to show your website to the world, right? You're building a website. What web hosting is, it's basically the way your website's displayed. So if you want to look at it like a building a home, right? You can, you can put all of the electrical outlets into your home. You could set up all your lights and everything like that. But if you don't have power service coming to your house, none of the electric is going to work. And look at hosting like that too. Um, hosting is where all your files are going to get hosted. It's where your it tells the world, the internet world, where your site is and what it's going to look like and everything about that. So you buy your domain and then you have to have a hosting account to be able to host and show that domain to the world. All right. Web hosting is super important to set up right from the get go. And just like your domain, you need to make sure that you own your own hosting account, set it up yourself manage it. Just make sure you're the one that holds the ultimate keys for it. And you're never giving that away to somebody. Again, you wouldn't have one of your employees or you wouldn't hire a consulting agency to sign up your business license and lease all your equipment and do all that stuff in their name because they technically own it. Same thing goes with your domain and your web hosting. Um, and you, last year, I want to say it was, it was another, or it, may, it might've been 2020. I don't know the last since 2019, all these years are like washing into each other. It's like the longest, shortest, three year span of my life. But at some point recently, Google released a core algorithm update that directly um, is tied into your website speed and your user experience on your website. And if you know how Google works and you listen to this podcast or you've watched some of our videos, Google is all about serving the most relevant pertinent content for their user base as to what they're searching in the fastest, most efficient way possible. So what Google realized is websites that take a long time to load, people were not staying on them. They were in fact clicking back and going to another website. People don't want to wait for anything. We live in a microwave society. That 30 minutes or less world is turned into 10 seconds or less or two seconds per or less when it comes to your website. So the faster your website is, the faster it shows the information that people are looking for, the more preferential treatment as far as rankings um, you're going to get. Now that's just looking at it from Google's perspective, but if you're looking at it from you and I's perspective, I'm not going to sit on a website that's taking forever to load, especially if I have property damage, especially if it's an emergency. So you want to choose a web hosting partner. 
um, that's going to be able to host your website in the fastest way that's optimized for your site. And you can go down a rabbit hole of technical details as far as what you need to be doing from a website development standpoint, but you got to make sure you're starting off with the right foundation with a web hosting account. So just like your domain, people can steal your information or hold you hostage. And the biggest reason I'm making this video and this making this podcast episode is because this happens so much. It's, it's getting really annoying to have to keep repeating myself. So set up and manage your own hosting. Make sure you're the one that holds on to it because people can hold you hostage. We recently had a client. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but they came to us. They're ready to move on from their original ho- uh, web marketing agency, but that web marketing agency was managing and set up their hosting from the get-go. So their website was all their files were there, were there, everything that they had to do with their website. And the company said, yeah, yeah, you can cancel. But you know, there was a little addendum in the agreement that says, um, you got to give us six months notice, which they didn't know that they had. And that's their bad for not reading the fine print, but they basically were looking for a big, you know, ransom to get their site back. Um, so when you are the one that owns all that stuff, you avoid all those details. Um, and from a technical perspective, you can move your hosting around just your web hosting anyways, by just changing some records here and there. So while you can have other companies set up your hosting, just make sure you own it. You're the one that has your credit card info. It's all your contact information in there. Um, like I mentioned before, you want a web hosting that's optimized for SEO. Since especially this core algorithm update came out and page speed UX is like a huge ranking factor. Make sure that they, you know, whatever hosting that you're using um, is optimized for SEO, meaning you want server side caching um, to make your website load faster the more people go to it. Um, you don't want a huge server load. First time to bite is a big thing. Um, if you want to check your website, you can go to Google Page Speed Insights and type in your URL and it'll give you a complete report on um, your website, its speed, and its user experience. Um, so I implore you to go do that. Um, but with the right optimization, the right hosting, um, you at least start off on the right foot as far as a foundation. And then whoever your web developer is, um, should take that into big consideration when they're building your site by putting, you know, your hosting and caching your images, um, and the way the site is built that way your site is super fast and it shows everybody what they want. It should snap into place. If you look at any of our client websites, when we show you guys, um, you know, on our Instagram page or anything like that on Ironclad Restoration Marketing's Instagram page, um, take a look at some of those URLs, those domains that we put up for some of our new clients um, and watch how fast those websites ho- uh, load, right? And that's what you want. Um, when it comes to hosting, um, you know, there's hundreds of hosting companies out there. GoDaddy has their own hosting. WordPress offers hosting. Um, Google is a great way to host your website. Um, I don't like any of them, to be honest with you. Um, I, I just like the control that we we have a partnership with a company called HXC Hosting. So I highly recommend them. Uh, when this algorithm came out, I got with the owner of HXC Hosting. We talked a little bit about what my clients would need. And they ended up building out a web hosting package that is SEO optimized. That is a quarter of the price for, you know, if you're comparing apples to apples, um, it's a quarter of the price that of any hosting company out there. You can host unlimited websites for that fee. I think it's 25 bucks a month. Um, and I know, and we put all of our clients that we can onto this HXE hosting. Um, they're really simple. It's straightforward as it gets. Um, you know, you, but go in, check them out. If you're looking for a new hosting partner, it's super easy to go. Um, it's, it's really basic, but it, it gets you what you need. And you know, you don't have to worry about the hosting when it comes to your website anymore. So check them out. But again, there's a hundred different hosting companies you can go with. Some are, there's good and bad about every single one of them. Um, personally, I don't like the shared hosting with GoDaddy. Um, be careful with shared hosting. You know, you, it's always an ideal word. Shared hosting is fine. Get a dedicated IP if you can. What shared hosting is kind of, and GoDaddy has gotten better about this in the past, but what it is essentially from, you know, the most basic way I could put it is, let's say you have an apart, uh, a shared hosting plan as an apartment complex and there's um, room technically for 30 people in this apartment complex. Sometimes, um, that can grow to hundreds of people. So what you have is you have much bigger of a load on that platform. Um, so you're sharing, so you're sharing, it's almost like sharing water with hundreds of different people in your house. Your, your, uh, water pressure is probably not going to be as high as it was if you just had your own pump and your, or your own service going to your house. And that's kind of how web hosting works. The other thing about it is, um, IP reputation comes into play when it is, is also a small ranking factor. Um, so you could be sharing your domain with like companies that are spamming, um, I know GoDaddy scans, most of the host company, if they're good, they'll scan and get rid of companies that are doing that. But at the same time, you're sharing an IP with people that may be doing that. So 
dedicated IP. Check out HXC hosting. Um, now, web hosting, when you talk about HXC, they're great. Um, what you can also do with web hosting um, is host your email there with something called webmail. So any, any web hosting platform with cPanel, if it's done right, you'll have webmail in there. Webmail is great. Um, it gets you an email address that's at your domain. So if you're joesrestoration.com, you can have, you know, info at joesrestoration.com. That email is hosted within that server for that IP. But if you remember what I just talked about with shared IPs, um, you can have some issues if you use webmail. Well, you 100% will have issues with webmail um, with email deliverability. All right. So there's a lot of the bigger platforms that do not or really, really scrutinize um, um, email addresses that come from shared IPs or webmail. So if you have a, you should have a web lead, lead form, con, uh, ugh, I'm sorry, um, a contact form on your website that generates leads, right? Somebody could fill in their name, address, whatever, and send you a lead. If you're using webmail, you're going to have an issue with getting that lead form to deliver to you. Um, using webmail, I know Gmail, Yahoo, all the big guys, a lot of them don't even accept webmail anymore. Uh, the last few years, and I'm sure you've noticed this, like spam, uh, malware, viruses have been huge with emails. So the, the way to combat that is these email hosting platforms like Gmail, Yahoo, Office, Hotmail, all of them just said, you know what, we're just not going to take it. So they put it actually a score on these emails to authenticate them. So what we recommend for all of our clients and I'm recommending to you right now is set up your email hosting with either Google Workspace, which is Gmail, or Office 365. Um, if you are going the GoDaddy route for hosting, um, they, they're resellers of Office 365. Easy. They'll set it up for you. It's great. Um, there is no setup fee. Um, don't buy any of the upgrades or any of the BS that they try to sell you. You just keep it simple. Um, your email account should be around $6 a month per account, whether you use Google Workspace, which is Gmail or Office 365. If you use one of these big email third parties, you're still able to, you know, there's an authentication process that goes through, but you're, you're still able to have um, a, a domain hosted email, but Gmail or Office 365 are going to be the ones that authenticate it. And everybody accepts Gmail. Everybody accepts Office 365. They're the biggest ones out there. So if you have a lead form on your website and you want to make sure that emails are getting delivered back and forth, um, check out Google Workspace. We, I personally use Google Workspace for all my companies. Never had an issue with it. Six bucks a month per email account is worth its weight in gold. You have an easy to use admin. And most of you guys out there have Gmails anyways. It's literally the same platform. But you're able to, instead of having it at gmail.com, it's at whatever the hell your domain name is, .com or .net or whatever. Um, so check that out. Um, Google Workspace, super easy to set up. There's a little bit of work you got to do on a hosting side, but it's not hard. They walk you through it step by step. Uh, but you do need to have access to a hosting account, which is why you should own your own hosting account. You can set up your own emails. All right. So those are just the basics. Um, so let's recap this real quick. One, if you take anything away from this episode today, make sure that you're the person that is setting up, managing, and owning your domain registrar and your hosting account. Do not let anybody buy a domain on your behalf. I promise you at some point it's going to become an issue. So you should have complete control over all of that information. Um, the other part about it is if you're going to buy a domain or you're looking to change your business name, make sure you buy a domain with your business name. Keep it simple. And if somebody already has it, use a city or a state indicator in it. You know, if we were somebody already owned ironcladrestorationmarketing.com, I'd do ironcladrestorationmarketingflorida.com, ironcladrestorationmarketingpros.com. Something simple, something catchy, because it does lend to your brand a little bit, especially when you're talking about your print assets like your vehicle wraps or your business cards, okay? Remember, .com, .net, .biz, .yet, dot, dot, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter to take a note from the rock. It doesn't matter what your domain is. Just get one because you are building authority to whatever that domain is. Make sure whatever you're purchasing, you're happy to live with forever. Um, Check out, when it comes to hosting, again, own and set up your own account. Check out hxchosting.com. Again, that's who we recommend. But there are goods and bads to every single different hosting company. Um, these ones we just know because from, you know, our job is to get you placed on Google, get rankings better. Um, we like to know that we have a good foundation starting off from a hosting perspective. Um, when it comes to hosting your email, highly recommend getting away from webmail. 
Um, even though it's free, the small fee to use something like Google Workspace, which is Gmail or Office 365, is worth it to make sure that your emails get delivered and your lead forms actually get to your inbox, okay? If you have any questions about domains, about hosting or anything like that, please go on to my website, ironcladrestorationmarketing.com. I've got a ton of resources there. We have a YouTube page with over 150 videos. There's definitely videos that talk about this stuff specifically. From there, you can get in touch with me directly. You can drop a comment in our YouTube channel. Um, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, head on over to our website, check it out. Um, we have a 2020, or actually, I'm sorry, we have an internet marketing checklist that goes over a few of these things. Um, it's free. You just download it. We send you a PDF. We just need your email. And you can actually go through this checklist and make sure a lot of this stuff is put into place. But if you take anything away from this episode, buy your own domain, own your own registrar account, own your own hosting account, um, and you will avoid a lot of future problems for your restoration business. That's it for today. Um, like our show, subscribe to it, leave us a review. Um, in the review, you can comment. Um, so if you're struggling with anything for your restoration business, write it in your comment. I'll make a video addressing it specifically to help you out, get the most out of your restoration business when it comes to getting leads from the internet. We will talk to you soon.